Hello, I'm Richard with EV for You Custom Conversions. And in this, another episode of our Electric Carmen Ghia Repairs, Maintenance and Improvements series, um, we're going to be reinstalling the batteries. We uh, just finished um, installing the transaxle after uh, replacing it uh, with a rebuilt one and all the associated items that uh, that entailed. In order to do that, uh, we had to remove the battery pack in this vehicle because the battery pack sits where the original package shelf was, which is on top of the uh, cover plate, which allows access to our gear shift, uh, our shift rod coupler, which connects to the transaxle. And so, battery pack had to be removed. Well, not the, the batteries had to be removed. The frame and everything uh, is able to stay in the vehicle. But it did mean we had to disconnect uh, and remove the 44 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate cells in this vehicle. So what we're doing now is we're reinstalling those, which is not an issue. What takes a little more time are the interconnects. And uh, I'll, I'll show you why in a second. So here are the 44 cells uh, replaced back in our battery box in the back of the Carmen Ghia here. This sits right behind the, the seats. It's uh, right on top of the, the tunnel. It's located where the uh, original package shelf was and sits about I don't know, four inches higher than the original package shelf did. So we have almost the exact same amount of cargo space in this vehicle as I had originally. Now, we removed these cells, and so to put them back, what we do whenever we build a vehicle is we make a legend. And here's just a, a copy I made uh, to have in the vehicle while we're doing the work. And so what you see is a layout of how the cells are oriented in the vehicle. So we have the polarity uh, set up the way that we want. And then the green line shows the, the, the wiring. And so it's kind of a Kind of a different looking setup in that, you know, the, the negative comes in here, goes down to the middle row, back to the back row, then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, then comes across and down to the front row, a couple, then back and forth between the middle and the front rows. And the reason it's that way, which is a little odd for, for us, is that this battery pack was originally. Uh, 44 of the GBS 100 amp hour cells, which are um, a little different uh, size and layout. They come in a four pack, and that's how they were installed in this vehicle. So this battery box was originally designed for a different make of cells. Um, it currently has 44 of the uh, CALB CA series 100 amp hour cells. And so in order to get them to fit in here, we had to to do a little different layout. And uh, so anyway, that basically necessitated the um, kind of different wiring setup to make it uh, compatible with the original uh, GBS layout. So that's what we're going to be doing next, is we're going to be uh, doing the interconnects, and we're going to do them. Uh, one at a time um, and keeping the rest of the um, terminals covered so as we don't have any accidental shorts and as we work our way across and have interconnects we will be putting a piece of insulation over it and so basically it's either uh, I mean it's always going to be insulated there won't be any um, bare terminals to where we can have any problems so it 
it's a, a little bit slower process, but this is the point in the process where you want to take your time and be careful. We don't want to short anything out because it can really mess up your day. So once that's done, we're going to take it for a test drive. That's the other thing that we're going to feature in this particular video. So stay with us. We'll show you what, what it looks like all wired up and and then we'll put our insulated covers on and then put our our lid back on the the box and then we'll show you those uh, you know uh, outcomes what it looks like we're not going to bother you with the with the process itself like i said it's there's um, 44 cells that need to be interconnected that takes a few minutes to do that doesn't make very interesting video but we'll show you what it looks like after we're done and once that's uh, buttoned up, we need to take our new transaxle out and see how she sounds. And uh, it's going to be a little different gearing than we had uh, the original transaxle in this thing. Um, had custom gearing in it, and we chose to go back to the stock gearing. Um, probably shouldn't have, because I really liked the gearing that was in the car, but uh, we'll, we'll see how the, the stock gearing works in this one. And um, so stay with us. If, if for nothing else, the, the, the little test drive should be a lot of fun. Here's a shot with the uh, battery interconnects in place. And so now we'll put the, uh, our insulating strips on top of that. Our insulated strips on top of the cells and the terminals. Next, our polycarbonate lid will go on and is bolted into place. So this is with the uh, clear polycarbonate cover in place. Now we'll cover this with, uh, with a pad and the carpet and she's ready to go out for a test drive. So stay with us. That's what's up next. Test drive after replacing the transaxle in our 1974 electric Carmen Ghia. All right, let's take that test drive we talked about. So this is a test drive after installing the new transaxle, or rebuilt transaxle. This is not the first drive since the new transaxle has been in, been busy, so we've actually probably got oh, about 1,500 miles on this transaxle already. But I promised you a test drive, and so here we go. We take off in second gear. It, uh, Feels pretty much the same as it did before. The gearing's a little bit different. This is stock gearing. The guy we bought the car from had changed the uh, gearing in the car. And so, first, second, and third were different. Fourth was stock. But what I notice is Second's a little bit taller than it was when he had it. He had a pretty close ratio setup going. And so we have a little taller second and third gear, which doesn't bother me at all. The thing still, uh, you know, makes a nice road car, shifts just fine as far as um, uh, compatibility with the motor. You know, pretty good takeoff in second gear. But what you notice more is not so much the gearing in this one, but we have the controller set up with the uh, ramp brake such that the thing doesn't, you know, take off real quick. The, the amps ramp up rather slowly. And that's to protect our 41-year-old running gear. Um, so, you know, 
it's not a race car it's a commuter vehicle it will take off quick in first gear if you if you go down to first gear here's first gear take off it's 20 real quick
video series, which was basically the three portions, repair, maintenance, and improvements. Well, the improvements will be the installation of rear disc brakes. And we're also going to uh, replace the pads on the front. But that's more of a maintenance issue. The improvement will be adding rear discs, which will give this car four-wheel disc brakes. Which is really the only thing this thing is lacking. It, it handles very well. I love the way this car handles. And it, you know, accelerates nice. I mean, you're not going to win drag races, but it's definitely fun. I do surprise a lot of people. They don't expect it to be this quick. And uh, it's just the braking. When we've had it on the track and so forth, the stock front disc brakes and rear drums just can't handle the, uh, the heavy braking on the racetrack. So going to four-wheel disc will hopefully take care of that. And we get rid of another maintenance issue, and that's adjusting the rear drum brakes. But this car will outhandle most. I can pull in the parking lot, just leave it in fourth gear. It doesn't pull hardly any amps, and I can maintain my comfortable speed in the parking lot here. And so, that will conclude the test drive of our 1974 electric Carmen Ghia with the uh, rebuilt transmission in it from Rancho Performance. And so the next video will start the um, uh, rear, disc rear disc brake install. And we hope you stay with us and join us for that portion of our video series.